Hey everyone, Ray with Curated Computing here and welcome to today's video. Uh, what we're going to be doing on this particular card, it's a MSI Mac OC 5700 XT. Um, these were known to have some thermal pad issues, so we're just going to replace these preventatively for our customer. They're going to be using this for mining. Uh, in my experience with these cards in the past, is that the thermal pads have actually been smaller than the memory modules on the majority of them. So this is just some preventative maintenance. Um, we basically got four screws on the back of our heat sink and that should be enough to get this uh, cooler to pop off. So I'm gonna go in a cross pattern when I undo these, same as when I tighten them. We still got our seal on here. So uh, yeah, we know it's never been touched before. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and tear this thing down and see what we're working with. Super easy tear down. I believe this one is just four screws. Some other models are a little bit more difficult, but I've been working on 30 series cards this whole week, so this certainly is a treat. So we've got our four screws off here, and basically we're just gonna separate the cooler uh, from the PCB. Um, that's as simple as that. We've got a fan connector here. We're just gonna gently kind of wiggle this back and forth. Try and grab on the connector more than you are the wires. Um, and then we're gonna peel that off. So basically we're left with our PCB um, and then our cooler separate. But if you'll notice on here, these are some freaking small thermal pads here. And um, I don't know if you can see that, but they're slightly oily. So uh, definitely a good idea to replace these. Uh, and then also, take notice of the size of this thermal pad here, okay? Clearly not covering the entire memory module, right? Look at all that. So these certainly are going to need replaced. So first step when you're doing a thermal pad job um, is just uh, take notice of the placement of all of these. I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. Like, all right, so for the top two memory modules, are you kidding me? That's all the cooling they have. I thought it was for something else. That's for the top two memory modules. Yeah, not good, not good at all. So pretty piss poor quality on this, I have to say it. So uh, back to what I was saying is we wanna just take note of where all the thermal pads are. Um, and then we're just simply gonna set them aside and then replace them with our own appropriately sized thermal pads. And we're also gonna take note of the thickness of these. I think it's either a one or a one and a half millimeter pad there. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just taking all of these old thermal pads off. Sometimes they stick on the memory modules, sometimes they stick on the cooler, um, but we're just gonna go ahead and, uh, and take all these off. Got a bottle of isopropyl alcohol, so we're basically gonna clean. First we're gonna clean the dye, then the memory modules with that residue, and then we're also gonna clean the paste off our heat sink. So usually just use a microfiber cloth and then uh, just get a good cleaning on this. So we're getting paste, thermal pad oil, residue, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and uh, just gonna clean this off as best we can. You do want to get it pretty clean. Spritz it with a little more alcohol. little bit down here. Try and clean this off. I lost a little chunk of paste in one of these heat pipes. There we go. Just gonna try and get all the paste off without making a mess. So, there we go. We got our heat sink cleaned. Gonna wipe it with a fresh cloth when I'm done just to make sure I get everything. Um, 
that's it for the heat sink. And then, uh, yeah, we're just uh, gonna go ahead and clean all our paste off of here. We'll take our paste drag and you don't have to be 100% when you get this. I try and get all of it, but if you miss a little bit around the edges, not the end of the world. You could also use a cotton swab if you want. Uh, some people like to do that and that's fine. But it looks like we're getting pretty much everything off our dye just with this cloth. And we're just gonna kinda clean that and clean all the memory modules. There's like these stock thermal pads kind of turn to goo uh, if they're exposed to heat. Usually from mining, sometimes even though just from gaming. Um, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, we're gonna get our we're gonna get our dye all cleaned up here. Great. So we've got our dye and our memory modules cleaned up. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and basically what we're gonna do is take these stock pads and line them up with our newer pads and just make sure that the thickness is the same. So I'm gonna get into my one millimeter. I think these are, I think these are one millimeter. Actually, I'm gonna grab a different box of these. Okay, so these are my one millimeter pads. I'm just gonna hold these up and make sure the thickness is the same. I think, I think these might be one and a half actually. So I'm gonna go open those up. Make sure I've got some one and a half. Here we go. So, Thermal Right Extreme Odyssey Thermal Pad. These are measured in watts per meter Kelvin. This is 12.8, kind of middle of the road. You don't need anything crazy. The biggest issue on this card was simply just the size of the pad. So yeah, this looks correct. You could also take a digital caliper and measure these if you want, but usually these are all pretty similar. So we're gonna take stock thermal pad these have a bit more give to them. This looks slightly thinner, but that should be good because this one won't compress as much, these uh, these thermal right ones. So yeah, it seems like it's the right thickness to me. So again, one and a half millimeter. Then, yeah, basically what we're gonna do is take our pad and uh, Kind of line it up on our memory modules. Gonna go ahead and cut this and just oversize by just a hair. Gonna peel backing plate and the front plate off. Discard that. Left with our thermal pad here. Now we're simply just going to lay this on top of the memory modules. Like so. See? We've got a lot better coverage now, and then we're gonna do the same thing on this side, then individually cut these two. So, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And these are available on Amazon for about 15 bucks in all different thicknesses, ranging from 0.5 um, up to three millimeter, I believe. So, Again, we're just gonna get good coverage on our memory modules here. Then finally, we're gonna kind of cut our piece. So usually one pack of these is good enough for pretty much all GPUs, unless you're doing the back plate. Um, and these MSIs have a composite back plate, so I didn't really see much benefit into padding the back plate, but on something like a 30 series, I probably would be padding the back plate on there. So, yeah, I've got my two individual pads for these top two memory modules, and then I've got a little leftover pad. I'm just gonna throw this back in the envelope they came in for future use. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get these last two 
thermal pads on. Kind of like the other ones, except we're cutting individual squares. Okay, great. So I'll show you guys what we did here. You can see each one of these is one gigabyte of VRAM. So we've got eight total. And now we're just gonna go ahead and paste the die and then we'll reattach our heat sink. So I've got some Thermal Grizzly cry knot here. Just gonna use the syringe and dispense it. And basically just kinda row it across our die. Don't have to go crazy with it. I prefer to spread the paste instead of let the heat sink sandwich it like you would a CPU cooler just to make sure I've got good coverage. But essentially, that's all you really need to do. So it's pretty straightforward. Just gonna put the cap on my paste so it doesn't dry out and uh, clear the tip on here. That's really it. Um, for the work we're doing here. Then what I will do is I'll put the cooler like this. Line it up here. And then carefully plug in our fan connector. These are pretty delicate. So we want to make sure we don't damage it. I'm going to line up these four holes. Those are going to attach the heat sink to our PCB. So yeah, we're just gonna ever so carefully line this up. Okay, we're just gonna gently press down and uh, make sure everything's seated so I can see the threaded holes there. Now we're gonna like I mentioned earlier, we're going to tighten this in a cross pattern. So I'm just going to gently hand thread all four in and then tighten in a cross pattern. We want to be careful we don't put too much pressure on the die because in extreme cases it could actually crack. So definitely don't want to do that with our expensive graphics card. And uh, yeah, we're just going to start tightening these up. So one corner. To another corner. I'm not going crazy here. Like that. I'm going to go around one more time and just kind of gently snug these things up. And there we go. So now card is all back together. We're just going to inspect our card and make sure that these thermal pads are properly sandwiched and that there's not a gap. So let's see what we can find here. But if you look right under these heat pipes, I don't know how well you can see that, but I can basically see that the, um, the thermal pad is making contact with both the memory module and the heat sink. Um, yeah, so like right there, you look right there, you can see that we're making contact with both the memory module and the heat sink. And uh, yeah, so that's really all there is to it. And the final step is just to validate uh, both your core and your memory temperatures. So I'm gonna throw this on my test bench in Hive OS and just make sure either one of them is not abnormally high. Um, in my experience, if you do use the wrong size thermal pad, you'll notice that the core temp is going to be super high. It's going to hit red almost instantly. Um, that's why I recommend checking your work before throwing it on a mining rig. So that's going to be our next step. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. So. 
you guys like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. Any questions, throw them in the comments section and I will try my best to get back with you. Thanks for watching.